Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Charts with Dan. I'm very excited about the show this week. We're going to be looking at the specialty box office and particularly what the best international film... I'm just kidding. No. Of course, we're going to be talking about Spider-Man. Before we jump into everything, I do want to thank the presenting sponsor for today's show, Carbon Health. We're going to be partners for several weeks here on Charts with Dan, and I'm very happy to have them. As everyone is traveling for holidays, Carbon Health is able to provide several different services. One of them, if you're away from home, you can download the Carbon Health app and find a location that may be near you if you need their services. They also perform COVID testing. So if you're traveling, if you feel like you may need a COVID test, Carbon Health has performed over 1.5 million of them so far, and they would be happy to take you on to do that. You can find more about Carbon Health down in the description below, and I want to thank them for being a partner here on Charts with Dan. Uh, There is a very technical term that people that track the box office have after a weekend like we just saw, and that is, holy crap, Spider-Man No Way Home exceeded most people's expectations, even the, as I think I described them, pie-in-the-sky expectations last week were at $250 million. It even went above that. I guessed $180 million. I was off by about 80. I was conservative a little bit there for a couple of reasons. Number one, the pandemic. Number two, we didn't know how good the movie was going to be. And I think that's the key thing. When we look at these numbers and we're going to go very deep into the numbers, it's a something I've said on this show many, many times before. You can't track enthusiasm. This was a movie that connected with audiences, and we'll see numbers on that, in a way that very, very few movies do. And that drove not only people going to see it for the first time, wanting to stay away from spoilers, but especially, and and anecdotally from many people that I talked to, including this household, people that went back a second time to see it again because they loved it so much. Spider-Man No Way Home is a very special movie because it is that combination of the event film, but also an event film that people love and I think that it is going to do a fantastic amount of money over this holiday week coming up and then going into the new year. Um, I said, you know, and I've been saying for a while that this was the first movie after the pandemic that we can look at and say, this is just how it would have done anyway. And you have to think, you know, if we could jump into some kind of a multiverse or a pocket uh, universe where I know that there were some people that either couldn't go to the theater because some have started uh, reducing capacity, shutting down, etc., or still weren't comfortable going, how big would this movie have opened then? Who knows, but we have plenty to talk about. Let's look at the top five for this weekend. Of course, the number one movie, the estimates kept going up all weekend, $260,138,000. Five hundred sixty-nine dollars will go over exactly what that total means uh, throughout the rest of this show. But a massive debut for Spider-Man: No Way Home. It comes in uh, a little under two hundred sixty million dollars ahead of the second-place film this week, which is Encanto. It actually stays in second in its fourth week. One aside that I will make: uh, a non-Spider-Man movie in the marketplace, West Side Story, had not a very good hold in its second week. We talked last week about how a movie like West Side Story skews very adult. It's going to need legs. It's going to need people going out over the holiday season. If it's going to do well at the box office, it's going to be on the strength of its second, third, fourth week. Well, its second week wasn't particularly strong. It dropped about 65% uh, off of a, a not particularly impressive opening there. So we'll keep tracking to see how it does over the Christmas holiday and going into New Year's, but not a lot of great signs for West Side Story there. Ghostbusters Afterlife stays in the top five in its fifth week at $3.4 million. And then Nightmare Alley, which is a movie that I like very much. You can find a review for it here on the channel. I think that, which is funny because it is a Searchlight movie, which means it's technically the same owner uh, as Spider-Man No Way Home. I thought maybe they'd hope that they'd be a little bit of counter-programming this weekend. That did not work out for them because it opens to $2.8 million, uh, just hanging into the top five there. Again, hopefully that's a movie that people are going to discover in the next uh, couple weeks, two, three, four weeks, because I I like that movie a lot, and it should get some awards attention, but not a good decision in retrospect uh, to try to counter-program Spider-Man No Way Home there, because it just sucked up all the box office uh, that there was to be had. A lot of different marks set by Spider-Man No Way Home, so let's just jump into them. First of all, All-time domestic opening weekends. I didn't think that it would crack this chart. Not only did it crack the chart, it's number two 
It is second all-time, only behind Avengers Endgame, which is going to hold that record for, I think, a substantial amount of time. Avengers Endgame opened to $357 million. Then you have Spider-Man No Way Home at number two, just over $260 million. It jumps over Avengers Infinity War. That was some breaking news since yesterday. I mentioned there were two sets of estimates on the film. The original estimate that came out yesterday on Sunday had it just below Avengers Infinity War. Then today, as the numbers came in, uh, it was announced that it had passed Avengers Infinity War, so it is now the second highest domestic opening weekend of all time. Number four is Star Wars The Force Awakens. Number five, Star Wars The Last Jedi. Of course, because it is the number two domestic opening of all time and Avengers Endgame did not open in December, that means that Spider-Man No Way Home is now also the highest December opening weekend domestically of all time. Topping Star Wars The Force Awakens and a bunch of other Star Wars films. The Last Jedi is there at number three. The Rise of Skywalker at number four. Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, number five. Another thing that I said I didn't think, based on my original projection that Spider-Man was going to do, would be break into the top five openings in the Marvel Cinematic Universe of all time. And once again, it exceeded that expectation. It is number two behind Avengers Endgame. Avengers Infinity War is at number three. The Avengers is at number four from 2012. Black Panther now now bump down to number five and this is a number that's not just impressive when you look at the raw data I did I did some charts for uh, adjusting for inflation on some of the other figures but uh, when you look at the MCU if you adjust for inflation still Spider-Man the only non-Avengers film to be in the top five openings for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you adjust for inflation, then Infinity War jumps up just above Spider-Man again, so it's there at number three. But basically, Spider-Man drawing what the Avengers movies have drawn at the box office domestically, which is a lot of money. When we look at the Spider-Man franchise as a whole, again, obviously Spider-Man No Way Home, the clear winner, it has now unseated Spider-Man 3, which has held the title since 2007 of the highest opening weekend domestically for a Spider-Man film, Spider-Man No Way Home shatters that record with $260 million. Spider-Man 3 now number two with $151 million, followed by Spider-Man Homecoming at $117 million, the original Spider-Man 2002 at $114 million, and Spider-Man Far From Home in the fifth spot at $92.5 million. But here's one where we are going to look at the chart inflation adjusted, but I think this only underscores again just how impressive Spider-Man No Way Home's performance was because when you adjust for inflation, it is still the number one Spider-Man opening by over $60 million. Spider-Man 3 gains a lot of money, but is at $197 million. Then the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man in the third spot at number three with $178 million. Spider-Man 2 in number four with $127.9 million. And Spider-Man Homecoming in fifth place with $117.5 million. I want to bring back a feature now that we haven't really used because we haven't had a reason to use it really since I started this show, and that's something I used to do called the Bits Index. It's called the Bits Index because it stands for Butts in the Seats. It's basically a different way of looking at the box office numbers. We take the opening weekend or, or gross or whatever of a movie, we divide it by the average ticket price at that time, and that gives us the approximate number of tickets, aka the approximate number of butts in the seats for a film. And again, this really does underscore just how many people showed up to this movie this weekend, or at least how many tickets were sold, because a lot of these are probably accounting for people that went twice. Looking at the estimates here, 28.8 million the most attended Spider-Man film in history is what we see there from Spider-Man No Way Home. Spider-Man 3 at number 2 with $21.9 million. Then we have the original Spider-Man film in 2002 at $19.7 million. Spider-Man 2 with $14.1 million. So essentially No Way Home doubling the attendance of Spider-Man 2 in its opening weekend. Then Spider-Man Homecoming with just over $13 million butts in the seats. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 at $11.2 million. Then Spider-Man Far From Home at 10.2 million this year's venom let there be carnage coming in at 9.9 .9 million it was about 1.1 million higher than the next movie which was the original venom film 
Then we have The Amazing Spider-Man at $7.7 million, and the least attended Spider-Man film in its opening weekend by a pretty large margin, but also considered by many to be one of the best, is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It only drew 3.8 million ticket sales in its opening weekend. However, it would go on to a pretty healthy domestic gross. There's a much buzzed about sequel on the way, and it won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature. So not too bad of a consolation prize for Into the Spider-Verse uh, for coming in last on the Bits Index. Of course, we knew this was going to happen, but just for posterity's sake, let's look at the 2021 opening weekends. And Spider-Man No Way Home nearly tripling the next closest competitor, Venom Let There Be Carnage, which opened to $90 million. So Spider-Man No Way Home, the only film to open to both $100 and $200 million in 2021. That bumps Black Widow down to third place, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings to fourth with $75.3 million. All of the top five 2021 opening weekends are Marvel properties, Four of them from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, two from Sony, three from Disney. So uh, we've seen dominance from Marvel in the past, but just the circumstances of the pandemic, etc., it's very easy to see who's driving movie attendance right now at the box office as everyone is trying to scramble and get back on their feet. Something else we talked about last week, we've been tracking the box office weekends, comparing this year to 2020 and 2019, and I said that if we were going to beat 2019's box office weekend, Spider-Man would have to go through the stratosphere. Well, guess what, folks? It did, because for the first time in 2021, the box office beats the comparable weekend, the 51st weekend of the year in 2019. That would have been the opening of Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. You see the green line for the first first time passing the blue line there so just in the nick of time and on the wings of a spider the 2021 box office finally able to surpass any weekend in 2019 and again when we talk about the patterns the patterns were very similar year to year it's just that the big spike this year with spider-man was able to surpass the big spike with the rise of skywalker which was a much less regarded film uh, i think critically and perhaps with a lot of fans so uh, again uh, an important milestone in this box office recovery for the first time since the pandemic began we have a box office weekend that was able to top any box office in the previous uh, just about two years so that is pretty impressive as well Last week, we were talking about West Side Story and its demographics and why it may have opened low. And we were looking at the demographics of the top five openers uh, for 2021. And I thought as we look at this historic weekend in many ways for December and up in the top five and a lot of other categories, who was driving this growth? Who was driving this huge debut for Spider-Man No Way Home? And how does it compare to the folks that have been going for the other movies that opened big this year, or at least big not compared to Spider-Man No Way Home. So let's look at the demographics. The blue line there are the top five opening films pre previous to Spider-Man No Way Home. The orange line are the demographics reported for Spider-Man No Way Home. These came via deadline. Uh, they collect uh, theirs via uh, services like Post Track and Comscore. So you see for the top five openers, 60.8% of the audience was male, 63% of the audience for Spider-Man No Way Home male. So pretty Pretty comparable, slightly more male driven, but only by a couple percentage points. Uh, same with the female audience, the proportions about the same 39.2% of the audience for the previous top five openers uh, were female, 37% for Spider Man. This is a huge number. Remember last week we talked about the fact that moviegoers over 25 were the least likely to be returning to theaters right now, and that the market was being driven largely by moviegoers under 25. Well, look at this number. 50.4% of the audience for the previous top five openers in 2021 were under 25. 60% of Spider-Man No Way Home's audience was under 25. So as much as the younger audience was driving the box office previous to this, they really took the wheel on Spider-Man No Way Home. A 10 percentage point jump, so a very young audience going to see this movie, and something else, a much more diverse audience going to see the movie. So this is something that is registering across all lines. Uh, you see there that the previous top five openers, 41.6% of movie attendees were white, 32% of 
Spider-Man No Way Home's audience was white. So we saw a 4% increase in Hispanic and Latino audiences, about a, a percentage and a half in black audiences, Asian audiences and other ethnicities, which they don't break down in these different reports. We saw a 5% jump. So this is what you see, and this is what's driving the success of this film. A lot of young people going to see this movie and crossing a lot of different cultural lines. People just want to go check out this film, and there are a lot of reasons why. I still don't want to get into spoilers, so I'm not going to go specifically into it, but there was so much excitement, not just about what was in the movie, but just about the movie itself. I think people were very satisfied with it. We're going to look at the cinema scores here. There were so many notable things about this weekend that I couldn't, I mean, I could do a chart for all of them, but I think it would get a little repetitive because it's a lot of the same movies over and over. So here are just some uh, assorted spider stats. It was the best debut in Sony Pictures history, both domestic and globally. The number two opening day of all time domestically. The number two single day gross of all time domestically. The number two Friday gross of all time domestically. The number three Saturday gross of all time domestically. And the number three Sunday gross of all time domestically. It is now one of two non-Disney films in the top 10 domestic openings, along with Jurassic World. Keep in mind, even though Spider-Man is part of the MCU, it is not a Disney film. It is a Sony film. And then some franchise note, the Spider-Man franchise has now passed the Avengers franchise domestically as far as total box office. It is soon going to pass the Wizarding World franchise and the Batman franchise at around $2.7 billion. So Spider-Man now outgrossing Harry Potter and Batman uh, probably sometime this week it is also already the number seven highest grossing film domestically in the Spider-Man franchise. It has surpassed the total theatrical gross domestically of both the amazing Spider-Man two and Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. No movie that's opened to $200 million or more domestically has made less than $620 million. Of course, we will see if that is affected by the pandemic. Perhaps it's not going to have legs that are quite as long, but that's a story that has yet to be written. It is one of 91 films since CinemaScore started polling audience members on their opinions of movies. One of 91 films to get an A-plus CinemaScore. Always a great indicator for return audiences and word of mouth. It is the fourth MC film to receive an A+, along with the Avengers, Black Panther, and Avengers Endgame. It is only the second Spider-Man film to get an A+, cinema score, along with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. So that concept, the multiverse concept, really delivering with audiences. The top per theater grocer this week, as you can imagine, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, it averaged almost $60,000 in each theater that it played in. So there are a lot of happy theater owners this week and this Monday because they had a really great weekend financially. And then when we look at the top per theater averages for 2021, Spider-Man No Way Home comes in third behind the first two weeks of Licorice Pizza. It tops the third week of Licorice Pizza and then the debut of Come On, Come On. But those are all extremely limited releases. But this also kind of puts the success of Licorice Pizza in the four theaters that it was playing in uh, in perspective as well. Because think about how busy and how packed these screenings were for Spider-Man No Way Home. Licorice Pizza did better for two consecutive weekends than Spider-Man No Way Home, particularly in its first weekend where it made $86,289 per theater compared to Spider-Man No Way Home $60,000. That is literally a capacity screening every single time that you show the movie. So those four theaters that have been showing Licorice Pizza, they're looking at these other ones uh, that are that are getting all this Spider-Man No Way Home money and they're saying, well, welcome to the club because we've been here now for a couple of weeks. This is really one of the only non-Spider-Man charts that we have on the whole show, but let's look at the specialty box office, limited release, movies that are playing in 1,000 theaters or fewer. At number one is a film from India called Pushpa the Rise Part 1. This is a Telugu language film that explores the world of underground wood smuggling. I'm already excited. Licorice Pizza in its fourth week at number two with $85,000, followed by Red Rocket in its second week with just over $80,000. Drive My Car, which I saw picked up another Best Picture win from the LA Film Critics this weekend in 27 theaters, made $46,000. And Come On, Come On, still on the chart in its fifth week with $38,000. And I've had some people message me saying like, well, wait, I looked at your chart and this movie was above uh, all of those movies. And that's because sometimes 
times these movies are so small and they're in such limited release that the the grosses aren't even reported until late Monday, sometimes even Tuesday. So it is possible from time to time when we're looking at this specialty chart that uh, there will be a movie that would have been a top five movie if that gross had been reported at the time I'm putting the show together. Uh, but that is always on Monday. And if the gross isn't in, I can't report it. I try to look at as many different sources as I can, but sometimes one just doesn't come in in time. Looking outside the domestic market, this was also a Spider-Man weekend around the world. $340.8 million. This was another updated estimate that was sent in uh, earlier today from markets outside of the United States just this weekend. That makes it easily the number one film in markets outside of the domestic market. The Chinese film Sheep Without a Shepherd 2 comes in at number two with $54.3 million. It should be noted, Spider-Man No Way Home did not open in China and has not, as of recording this show, been given a date to open in China. It is part of this burgeoning conflict that we're seeing here, particularly between Marvel and China, Disney and China. Uh, so China has a $54.3 million movie that opens. You have to think, though, that if Spider-Man No Way Home had opened in China, that it would have made more than that. And China gets to keep a lot more of the box office than the distributors here do. So even though, you know, $54.3 million, hey, that's nothing to sneeze out. You do have to think that theater owners would have brought home a lot more money this weekend. It's just that uh, we are in a very interesting phase uh, with relations between Hollywood studios and the Chinese market. And there is still a, a, a very real possibility that Spider-Man No Way Home will not be released in that country at all, which would be a substantial amount of money. However, it's making an incredibly substantial amount of money everywhere else in the world. So it's not like it's make or break. The Matrix Resurrections opened in a few markets internationally, and it was good enough to be the third highest grossing film of the weekend outside of the domestic market with $9.2 million. It opens here domestically this week. Encanto at number four with $7.9 million, and another Chinese film, the animated film Lion Boy, at $7.4 million. So when you combine the international market and the domestic market, we get the worldwide market, and Spider-Man demolishing the worldwide market, $600 million just over. That was the final worldwide gross reported today. Again, that was a update for an estimate that was sent yesterday. The, the second highest grossing film, less than 10% of that, which would be Sheep Without a Shepherd 2 at $54.3 million. In Kanto, the third highest grossing film worldwide this weekend with $14.3 million, followed by The Matrix Resurrections and Lion Boy. And this was another debut that cracked the top five all time. Spider-Man No Way Home, the the third highest global opening weekend of all time. The Force Awakens at number five with 528.9 million. The Fate of the Furious at number four with 541.9 million. Then we have Spider-Man No Way Home in the third spot. Avengers Infinity War in second place with 640.5 million. And then more than doubling that, Avengers Endgame, which opened to $1.2 billion in its opening weekend globally. It should be noted, Avengers Infinity War, Spider-Man No Way Home, and Star Wars The Force Awakens all opened globally without the Chinese market. The Fate of the Furious and Avengers Endgame did have the Chinese market. So not quite a one-to-one -one comparison, but still pretty impressive for those other films that they did not have one of the biggest markets right now. You could argue, perhaps not after Spider-Man, but uh, for the last year and a half or so, the biggest theatrical market in the world on board. Looking at our 2021 domestic chart, Spider-Man No Way Home goes right to the top. It is the highest grossing film of 2021 domestically. It will be the highest grossing film of 2021 domestically. And everybody almost takes a step back. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings drops down to number two. Venom Let There Be Carnage drops down to three. Black Widow drops down to four. F9 drops down to number five. Eternals drops down to six. No Time to Die drops to seven. A Quiet Place Part Two drops to eight. Ghostbusters Afterlife stays at number 10 based on the business it did this past weekend. And Jungle Cruise drops from number nine to out of the top 10. So that is your current top 10, although we do have a lot of movies that are still to come out. Uh, that's the barrier, though. $117.2 million is the number that you have to meet to make the 2021 box office top 10 domestically. Let's look at the 2021 worldwide box office where we will also find Spider-Man No Way Home. Not quite at number one yet, but certainly not out of the question. I think it's 
based on a $600 million opening, honestly, quite probable that Spider-Man No Way Home very well may break $1 billion worldwide and be the number one movie of 2021. Spider-Man No Way Home comes in at number six with $600 million. That drops Venom Let There Be Carnage down one. That drops Godzilla vs. Kong down one. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings down one. Eternals down one to number 10. That drops Dune out of the 2021 worldwide top 10. Although, if it keeps generating grosses, it is possible that it could overtake Eternals. We'll just have to see how those two things shake out. For now, the top five is unchanged. Although, I don't see a reality, honestly, where next week... Spider-Man No Way Home doesn't enter at least the top five because Detective Chinatown 3 is only less than $100 million, about $99 million ahead of Spider-Man No Way Home. So Spider-Man No Way Home is going to break into the top five next week. It may very well get up there. I mean, listen, at this point, I'm going to stop making projections because it, it, it wouldn't shock me if it did enough money in the next seven days with the holiday and everything to be number one. It's another $300 million. But right now, Detective Chinatown 3 at number five, F9 at 4, No Time to Die at 3, High Mom at 2, The Battle at Lake Shangjin at 1, and I think they're all going to take one step back as we go towards the new year. Overall, I think this was a great weekend if you're a theater owner because you had packed house after packed house, and I think that this is going to continue. Uh, again, anecdotally, uh, it doesn't look like uh, I'm going to be able to do any kind of critic screening, so Mara and I were looking at uh, tickets for The Matrix Resurrections for its opening day on Wednesday, and I can say that here uh, we have one IMAX screen in my market. All of the IMAX shows for today were sold out already. And this is a Monday, um, a lot of people still working. That's very unusual. It's very unusual for any shows to be sold out. For all three shows on a Monday to be sold out ahead of time, I, I can't think of another time recently or really any time that that's happened. So Spider-Man still drawing huge crowds. And then on Wednesday, when Matrix Resurrections opens, our IMAX screen is having one screening at the beginning of the day, which is the one that we are going to attend. And then the other two or three screenings are going back to Spider-Man. You can't blame them because if that's what people want to see, there's no need in having an empty theater. The theater that I'm seeing Matrix on right now, not even close to being sold out, and the fact that it's available on HBO Max. But we could see this start to spill over into the holiday week. If I'm the King's Man or Sing 2 or Matrix or some of these other movies, I might be getting a little worried because if the demand is there... If there are audiences that will fill up your auditoriums to see Spider-Man No Way Home, then it's very possible that theater owners, based on what they are allowed to do contractually, they have different agreements with different studios, but could be giving theaters and showtimes away to Spider-Man to keep up with audience demand. Now, a lot of people say that that's a bad thing for movies, and I understand as far as accessibility, uh, but at the same time, that means that you have a movie that has an outrageous amount of demand that's getting people in the building that's supporting the the theatrical and the movie going experience so you know as always it's a nuanced situation but for me right now with the state of movie theaters with the fact that it has been a very tricky market for basically the entire time i've been doing this show on my channel i'm very happy to see a movie that is inspiring people to go out and i hope that everyone is doing it safely uh and that uh you know if there are situations where capacities need to be cut down etc uh, i i think that that should be done but i I think that it is great right now that we have a movie that's inspiring people to go back to the movies because if you get back into that habit then maybe you are going to start supporting some of these other movies or maybe if you're seeing spider-man you might look at your watch and say hey there's a nightmare alley sh starting in 10 15 minutes i'm going to stick around and i'm going to watch that uh, or you know any of these other movies coming out i don't think that getting people inside the doors of a movie theater right now is a bad thing no matter what movie they're going to see and spider-man no way home certainly got a lot of people through those doors this weekend before we wrap things up with the streaming chart, which also has a healthy amount of Spider-Man on it, let's do a quick flashback to a previous weekend in box office history, and we are going back 20 years, two decades. Oh, these always make me feel old, but they're all so fun. Another blockbuster franchise getting its start, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring debuted 20 years ago to $47.2 million. Of course, it would go on to launch its own series of immensely successful films. This is my personal favorite of all the Lord of the Rings films. I, I, I like all of them. I think they're all great movies, but Fellowship is my favorite. I, I love that everyone has a different favorite. It was a little more competitive, although not much back in 2001. Ocean's Eleven was in second place in its third week with $14.7 million. 
followed by Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius debuting with $13.8 million, the second week of Tom Cruise's Vanilla Sky with just over $12 million, and the debut of How High with Method Man and Red Man, and essential for a lot of people uh, who were college age, as I was at that time, with $7.1 million. Let's look at the streaming charts, and this Spider-Man enthusiasm spilled over to those as well. Looking at the top 10 movies on Amazon, number one was Venom, Let There Be Carnage, a holdover from last week, then The Grinch at number two. Spider-Man Far From Home, which was on the chart last week, is up to number three, followed by No Time to Die, people purchasing that on Amazon. Then we have, in addition to the chart, Spider-Man Homecoming at number five, so people wanting to see the beginning of these Tom Holland films. Then at number six, The Amazing Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield's first movie as Spider-Man, Dangerous, Free Guy, and Dune are holdovers from last week. And then at number 10, the Amazing Spider-Man 2. So people wanting to catch up on uh, Tom Holland's movies, people wanting to catch up on Andrew Garfield movies. I'd like to think that they just have the Tobey Maguire movies memorized at this point, and that's why we're not seeing them here. They have been around for a little bit longer. Looking at the top 10 on iTunes, and again, a lot of Spider-Man love. Venom, Let There Be Carnage, number one. Spider-Man Far From Home, number two. And it was not even on the chart last week, so people either catching up or revisiting that film. The Grinch at number three. No Time to Die at number four. Ron Howard's How the Grinch Stole Christmas at number five. The Last Duel, now available for purchase and rental at number six. And then at number seven, we have Spider-Man Homecoming. At number eight, we have the pre-order for Spider-Man No Way Home. So despite the fact that uh, Spider-Man No Way Home is still in theaters and has only been in theaters for three full days, today is the fourth day, all three Tom Holland Spider-Man movies now in the iTunes top 10 because people went to see the movie and said, I'm not even going to wait to buy this thing. I'm pre-ordering it right now. At number nine, the French Dispatch entering the chart. It's available for purchase. And at number 10 is Free Guy. And as we always do, we're going to end the show by looking at Netflix. And as we've been doing for the past few weeks, I'm looking at the data that they're now sharing for the top 10 globally by hours watched. And because there's so much data to accumulate, this is for the week of November 29th to December 5th. So we have about a one week gap here for where we are uh, to what they're reporting. Uh, actually, a little bit more as we sit here. So a lot of people saying, like, uh, for example, a movie that you see here, The Unforgivable. Last week, a lot of people saying, why isn't The Unforgivable? on. It's because there is a reporting delay as they cultivate that data. But the week of 11:29 to December 5th, Money Heist Part 5 remains at number one. Then the Sandra Bullock movie, The Unforgivable, with 85.8 million hours watched, debuts at number two. The Queen of Flow Season 2 drops down one spot, as does Lost in Space Season 3. This is a good look at how global Netflix is. Titans Season 3, which is an HBO Max uh, original here in the United States, is at number five on the Netflix most watched programs because it is a Netflix original in most other places around the world. 26 million hours watched and cracking the top five. The first season of Lost in Space with 23.2 million hours watched comes up two spots. So I think a lot of people uh, either restarting the show uh, as season three comes out or uh, deciding to catch up before they watch season three. Money Heist Part 1, I think we have the same situation. Money Heist Part 5 is so popular that people are just starting back at the beginning to watch the series from the first part. 19.8 uh, million hours watched at number 7, a new entry to the chart. Squid Game in its 13th week, still on the top 10 chart globally for Netflix with 18.1 million hours watched. Then the Netflix original Red Notice comes back onto the most watched programs chart. And Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous, the fourth season, I've heard some good things about this, so I might have to check this one out. It is now on the chart uh, for the first week, even though it debuted last week with 17.4 million hours watched. Looking at the 10 most watched movies globally on Netflix, The Unforgivable is number one, followed by Red Notice. The original animated film Back to the Outback is at number three with 16.1 million hours watched. And then The Power of the Dog drops down uh, in its second eligible week, but still in the top five on the movie chart with 13.2 million hours. Single All the Way is at number five. A Boy Called Christmas is at number six. The Whole Truth is at number seven. A Castle for Christmas is at number eight. The only non-original film, Redemption Day, it is not being distributed on Netflix here in the U.S., but it is elsewhere, and then Spoiled Brats at number 10. And finally, the 10 most watched series on Netflix, Money Heist Part 5 at number 1, 
Queen of Flow Season 2 at number 2, Lost in Space Season 3 at number 3, Titans Season 3 at number 4, Lost in Space Season 1 at number 5, Money Heist Part 1 at number 6, Squid Game at number 7, Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous Season 4 at number 8, The King's Affection from South Korea re-entering the chart at number 9, and then Lost in Space Season 2 enters the chart at number 10. So Lost in Space, a big draw right now for people looking to watch stuff on Netflix. And that does it for Charts with Dan this week. I will not be taking any time off because of the way that the holidays fall, so I will be back this time next week to talk about Spider-Man No Way Home, how it does over the holiday weekend. Something to keep in mind, though, we've seen this before with a lot of other films, which is that uh, Christmas falls on uh, basically a weekend this year as we're coming up to it this week. And so a lot of times the weekend numbers will be a little bit lower uh, because people generally stay in on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. The big uh, rush is usually uh, a little bit before Christmas and a lot after Christmas. So I think we're going to see some big numbers this weekend, but they may be a little smaller, especially for movies that are opening this week and this weekend because the turnout is a little depressed on the actual holidays and then it picks up pace on the next week. Regardless, I will be keeping up with all that stuff, how Spider-Man is doing on all of these different charts. It really has been a a fun week to track the box office, just a fun week to be a a Marvel fan as I am, a Spider-Man fan as I am, a movie fan as I am, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see even more of what I'm up to, you can check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash danmerle. You can also check out everything I do here on the YouTube channel, on my audio podcast channel. All those links are in the description below. I just dropped an audio exclusive review of several movies that are in the awards conversation, including Annette and The Green Knight, Coda, uh, The Eyes of Tammy Faye, The Power of the Dog. I have my thoughts on all of them. You can find that over on the audio podcast channel. I'll also be releasing a bunch of reviews here on the channel as we get uh, closer and closer to the Christmas holiday, catching up on a bunch of things that have already come out this year that I haven't had a chance to see, or the new stuff like Matrix Resurrections that you'll see here later this week. Thank you so much for watching. Also, don't forget to check out all the information about Carbon Health down in the description below. And thanks again to them for being my partner on this show. If you're celebrating Christmas this week, have a very happy holiday, and I'll see you next time. Bye.